Today we are going to be taking thrifted wooden items and upcycling them into more modern home decor. I'll also be replicating a super fun paint job on this old crate, trying to make it look like this beautiful old ice cream bucket. Project number one begins with this outdated candle holder. I did pay $8 for it. All I need to do is remove the old floral and start taking off the candlesticks. They came off very easily with a screwdriver. I'm going to be giving each of them their own base with these wooden rounds I got for free at an estate clean out. I am tracing around the candlestick. I want to paint them, but I need to leave some of that wood raw to make sure that the glue will adhere as best as it can. I'm using DIY Black Velvet, a beautiful, rich black color to paint the bases of these. It is a clay-based paint, highly pigmented and thick, so all I need is one coat and I get the perfect amount of coverage. To seal up the paint, I am using Black Wax, also by DIY Paint. It is a buttery smooth wax, and I like using the black wax over the black paint to make it appear even more rich. I just apply a little bit with a chip brush, and you can see how it really darkens and richens up that paint. Now applying a little bit of wood glue there where my wood is still raw, I will put the candlestick on top of that spot, flip it over, and then attach it with a wood screw. I think these candlesticks are much more modern now and I split them into two sets, a set of three and a set of two, which will also increase my profit margin. So just a quick tip if you are a reseller. Here is a look at the final product. I love the combination of the wood and the black. And since they had those adorable little brass cups inside, I staged them up with some brass items and I just love the way they came out. Drop me a comment below. Let me know what you think. Do you like these better before or after I made the update? For project two, I am using two items I find all the time. These adorable vintage paper plate holders and a wooden bowl. This is another very easy project. I am just starting a little hole here in the bowl. You could use a drill bit. I'm just using the screw and screwing it down a bit to create a little pilot hole. Then I'll place my wood glue right around the rim here on the bowl, place the plate on top, and I'm using a screw and a washer to make sure that the bowl stays on securely. I've attached baskets with only screws before and they're just kind of small. There's more of a risk of them ripping out. So I do like to put a washer down first. Now you can see this isn't super aesthetic. So now I'm going to take just a touch of air dry clay and mold it around that washer and screw, creating a nice smooth circle. Once the air dry clay is dry, I will use a little bit of DIY paint. I chose the color Sandy Blonde and paint right over that air dry clay. A touch of clear wax will seal up the paint and now it looks like it is just a nice little cap on the top of that tray. As you can see, I've got them all staged up here. They're holding some heavier items and they are not giving. I chose some nice thick baskets, so these are going to make some adorable risers. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know how would you style these upcycled risers in your home? Y'all challenged me to recreate this paint finish on one of my Saturday morning lives, and I said I would. Now, I didn't have a bucket per se, but I'm going to recreate that paint finish on this old weathered crate. It's going to be a lot of fun. It has a few steps, but y'all could totally do it. I'm starting off with a DIY beadboard. This is just a beautiful plain white and I've got my DIY smoothie brush which is great for blending. So I'm going to start out by giving the bottom of this crate a nice coat of the white. I'm not worried about perfect coverage right now, I'm just getting on a base coat. 
This is a DIY Old 57 and it is a perfect match for that teal color. Notice I'm mixing it in here with a little bit of white just to work on the blending. There were some darker drips on this crate, so I wanted to create a little bit of a light ombre effect. Now it's time to add a little bit of the darker drip. So I've got Bohemian Blue. It is a beautiful teal color, but it was really, really intense. So I'm mixing a little bit here with some water and using it almost more as a paint washer watercolor effect. I've added just a touch with my brush and now I'm going to start spraying it down with my continual mist bottle and get it to start running and dripping down the box. This is one of the reasons I love DIY paint so much. You can create so many different textures and paint finishes because it is water soluble. It blends with the water, it mixes with the water until it's sealed. You can make it run and drip and blend so easily. Now I did notice in the picture there were a couple of little white spots of paint or I think maybe it was even from like the salt with the ice cream. So let's recreate those drips. I've got that same beadboard color that I used on the bottom, just touching a bit with my finger, spraying it with the Mr. Bottle and down it goes. I just love drippy paint finishes. Now the fun, fun, fun part. It's time to create some rust. I use a product, it's called Modern Masters Metal Effects. This is the rust effect. This is by Rust-Oleum and I order mine off Amazon. I will drop a link down in the description box below. It is a three part paint. There's a primer, an oxidizing paint and the rust activator. So my first step is to go in with this primer. I will do two coats of the primer, Dry time is half an hour after coat one, and then they suggest 12 hours after the second coat. I only waited about two today because I'm using such a small amount of the paint. The first time you use this paint, make sure you follow the directions. I've used it many times now and I'm a little more comfortable. So step one, two coats of primer. One coat of the primer is on. It's been drying for half an hour, which is the dry time directions on the bottle. And now we're gonna put the second coat of primer over the first. After the primer has dried for several hours, I'm going in with the oxidizing paint. Again, two coats right over the primer. I let it dry for half an hour before I put the second coat on, and then eh, it takes about 30 minutes to an hour for that to dry. Once it's dry to the touch, it's now time to activate the metal paint. I put my rust activator in my continual mist bottle. It makes it easier to apply in my opinion. Notice I've got the crate on the side. You want that rust activator to sit on the paint. If it was up tall, it would all just run down the box and not sit. So after five minutes of applying the first coat of activator, you go and apply a second coat and then you just let it sit and do its thing. After a couple of hours, it looks like this. How amazing. Now it's time to seal it up. So I'm using DIY clear wax and going just over the painted areas. I'm using my dark wax under the rust spots to make it look like it kind of ran and dripped down the paint. If that paint was too white on the bottom, it wouldn't look authentically old. Drop me a comment down below. Did I nail it or fail it? And let me know, are you gonna try out this awesome, fun rust paint for yourself? The paint and projects are available over on my site, upcycledbybree.com. I will be sure to link everything down in the description box. If you like today's wood thrift flip projects, be sure to give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and follow if you haven't so you don't miss any new content. Till next time, I'll see y'all later. Bye friends.